Laura and Laura Van introduction. So what is key learning of this part? We'll go through the Laura Van elements because Laura as a physical layer, as a modulation, it is not Laura Van. Laura it is a component, it is a, an element of the Laura Van. So we will go through Laura Van elements, then we will discuss, we will consider the link budget the range of the distance of communication, then the basic uh, LoRa uh, RF features, then we'll discuss LoRa classes. We have three different classes of the operation mode. Then protocol stack overview and important part and node network activation procedures. We have two procedures and practical part, the certification flow. What is LoRaWAN? LoRaWAN, it is not only the radio. Radio is only here. We have four layers of the system. End point, so this is the water meter or flow meter, whatever. And it is so-called device or in old wording, you can meet the word mode, mode, M-O-T-E. Mode means really basic part of something, of, of substance, really elementary part of substance. So node or mode or, or end point, point or device, this is the wording. Then we have gateway and the sufficient function of the gateway is to be a pipe, bit pipe, that's all. There is no brain behind the gateway. All the intelligence of the network is hidden behind network server. So network server decides which gateway uh, will be selected to send data to the end node. And the same in the uplink direction, the network server decides from which gateway take the message from the mode. And the highest layer, the application server. So in fact, the application server is the application which is seen by end customer, by, I don't know, utility company. So here we have LoRa physical layer, LoRa modulation. Here we have IP connection. And the same here we can have an IP connection or it can be implemented on the, on the physical machine or it can be implemented as, as virtual servers. It depends on IT experts, but here we have IP connection, like uh, 3G, like uh, Wi-Fi, optical fiber, whatever. Link budget. The beginners for the LoRa quite often ask about the range, the distance of the communication. I have very attractive examples for that. One example is that one of the LoRa network integrator, during the travel from Germany to China, they check in the luggage and they forgot to switch off the LoRa module. And the LoRa module went to the aircraft and when they landed in China, they realized that the, it was a transmission between the LoRa module inside the, the, the aircraft and the LoRa gateway in Berlin. The distance of communication was 113 kilometers with poor antenna and with uh, layers of the metal layers of the aircraft itself. So this is the one example. Uh, but of course, the gateway in Berlin is very well located because it, it is on the top of this TV tower, a very characteristic building in Berlin with ball. And the second example is the communication between the base station, the, the gateway, and the uh, LoRa mode on the balloon in Alps, and the distance was longer than 1,000 kilometers. But those two examples are theoretical, because in practice the distance is smaller. Okay, so let's do not talk about kilometers, meters, if we consider the range of communication. The only point we can consider it is the link budget. This is the real value and real point to analyze. 
What is link budget? What are the components of the link budget? This is the output of the transmitter fixed. We cannot increase the output power at infinitum. It is fixed, it is by regulation, by hardware, etc. Then we have antenna gain. It is also fixed. We selected particular antenna and there is no discussion. There is particular gain. Then we have gain of the receiver antenna. Let's say gateway antenna. We also selected particular antenna. There is no discussion. So it is fixed. And the sensitivity of the receiver. This can be influenced somehow. So what is the conclusion? We can influence the, the, the link budget, but maximizing the sensitivity of the receiver. So let's consider the sensitivity of the receiver, the ingredients, the, the, the components which influence the sensitivity. This is the big bank power, so-called background noise. Then we have 10 decimal logarithms of data rate in bit per second. Then we have signal to noise ratio and then we have noise factor of the receiver itself. And again, let's analyze. Signal to noise ratio is limited by the Shannon capacity. So let's say it is fixed. Noise floor of the receiver, it is defined by design of the hardware, by the design of the front end, fixed again. The noise power density, the, the background noise is fixed. We cannot change the, the physics. So the only degree of freedom, the only point to discuss, to tune, is the data rate. So we can maximize the sensitivity by lowering data rate. That's the cost of the big distance of communication. And this is the chart. So as you can see, the, the lower data rate, the data rate is here on the x-axis. This is 10 in power of 0, 1 bit per second. The better sensitivity. Key message, you can reach expected distance of communication, but the cost is the data rate. And what is the cost of the data rate? One word, energy. We are coming back to the modulation. So spread spectrum chirp modulation, so cyclic shift from F0 to F1, then from F1 to F0. Patented modulation, so we don't know the details. Information is in shift of the direction of population. We have half duplex, so the communication is bidirectional, but we have half duplex. We have frequency hoping, but not so advanced. In Europe, we have three channels. We can use frequency hoping to, to fulfill the duty cycle limitation. Eight, uh, the free band in Europe, uh, 868 megahertz, so well known to you, like wireless MBUS. 915 uh, in US. The power limitation is 14 dBms in Europe, in US a little bit more. And duty cycle is limitation is 1%. The, the integration period for the duty cycle is, is, is one hour, 60 minutes, 3600 seconds. And 1% of duty cycle limitation means that we can continuously transmit data for 36 seconds. This feature is automatically controlled by protocol stack and practical hint for you to switch off this feature for the development stage because it is annoying. You are testing something, you need to, you, you need to have quite frequent transmission because of testing and the duty cycle feature of protocol stack can stop your transmission. This table is very nice to catch the distance of communication details following the spreading factor. As you can see here, for the spreading, because for the, in Europe we are using spreading factor from 7 to 12. So from 128 chips per symbol up to 4K chips per symbol. For spreading factor 7, we have very nice bitrate. More than, much more than 5 kilobits per second. But the sensitivity of the receiver is FSK-like. So there is no difference, there is no added value comparing to FSK, comparing to wireless MBUS. So, the, so I expect the, distance, the, the comparable distance of communic communication for spreading factor 7. For the spreading factor, maximum spreading factor uh, allowed in Europe, 
12, we have very nice sensitivity, 136 dBms, but the data rate dramatically drops down to 250 bits per second. So please be aware of this feature. So this is the this is the this chart, this theoretical chart in practice, in real life. This is the indicative basic data rate. We need to consider the protocol overhead. So the so the practical data ra rate drops more down to I don't know 150 bits per second because the overhead is 30 40 percent depends on the on the forward error correction ratio and again basics for better understanding the chip rate it is multiplication by two in power of spreading factor multiplied by bit rate bandwidth in practice we have 125 to 250 and 500 kilohertz in europe we have 125 narrowing the band will increase the sensitivity of the receiver because we are integrating less noise from the band. Time on air. This is important. The higher spreading factor, the longer time on air and the bigger energy consumption. Bit rate, it is uh, the number of the bits per second during uh, TX phase. Forward error correction, so the protocol overhead to correct the errors, transmission errors. Coding rate, 4 by 5 means 25% of additional information to correct the message. The higher percentage of uh, forward error correction in payload, the longer time on air. Range of, of the communication, it is link budget. Not, we, we are not giving the range of communication in meters or kilometers. Receiver sensitivity, the wider bandwidth, the lower se uh, receiver sensitivity because we are integrating more noise. Narrowing the, the band, we are integrating less noise. Very important feature of the LoRa protocol stack. Adaptive data rate. So the protocol stack can adapt automatically following the over-the-air conditions, tune automatically the data rate. So it means it tunes uh, the spreading factor. So if the quality of the received signal is quite nice, we can decrease the spreading factor. Le we can start from the biggest spreading factor to, to, to have a really robust uh, communication. And if the, if the quality of the received signal is, 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 is good, we can decrease the spreading factor, lowering time on air. And that's why this is good for the device. We can decrease the energy consumption, then not we. The protocol stack can decrease, can reduce the energy consumption by tuning the data rate in adaptive way. And it is also good for the network because we are reducing the traffic, over the air traffic. And this way, we, we, we are optimizing the network capacity. We are increasing the network capacity. The classes, the modes of operation. Class A, this is very basic and most common class uh, for flow meters, water meters, uh, gas meters, uh, heat meters. It is the basic class. Node transmits uplink. Uplink means from the node to the network in up direction. Node transmits data. Node can transmit data synchronously, so every period, and or can transmit asynchronously because of some event. I don't know, tamper detection, let's say, of the, of the water meter. So the network must wait for the activity of the node. There is no way for the network to send downlink at any time. Network must wait for the node activity, node transmission. After the transmission, node opens two receive windows, up to, up to two receive windows. So after transmission, uh, node waits for the receive delay one. It is in practice one second. Then opens RX slot. And if there is no over the air activity, it goes sleep. That's why we have hardware feature 
to, to, to detect the, uh, the, the radioactivity, the channel activity, because we can go sleep quicker and save energy. If there is no activity during first Rx slot, it goes sleep, and then after receive delay 2, which is in practice 2 seconds, it opens the second slot and then go sleep. And the procedure is repeating. The class B, for example, the area of implementation, it is prepayment water meter. Customer can buy some amount of water and then needs to activate the credit. So it would be nice to send this credit to the water meter in not so long time. And the class B lets to send downlink message, so from the network to the node, within scheduled windows, time slots. And how does it work? Always the basic mode, it is the class A. It is on the responsibility of the node application to decide when it wants to switch to class B from class A. So in class A, node sends to the network request to switch to class B and then opens the receiving window and within this window the network sends first so-called beacon so the synchronization information and this information synchronizes the local node RTC tunes the local node RTC to follow the RTC the, the time base of the network which is GPS based for example this is the first function we are tuning the local RTC, the local time. And then the second information is the pink period. Because in class B, the node opens periodically the receiving window, accepts those windows. So this is the additional functionality. So let's say, for example, every 16 seconds, we have additional receiving window synchronized to the network. So the network, every 16 seconds, can send the downlink to the node. So this is the, the 16 second, it is a pink period. And we need to resynchronize periodically. So we have the second period, the beacon period, because of the floating of the time base, for example, RTC crystal on the node. So after beacon period, within pink slot, network sends again the synchronization. So this pink period, it is, for example, 16 seconds. The beacon period can be, I don't know, a few minutes, for example. Depends on the particular conditions, depends on designer, in fact. So in our example, when the customer buys some amount of water, he needs to wait up to, I don't know, 32 seconds to update the credit in water meter, if the mode B is, is activated. Of course, the cost, the background of, of, of class B, it is the, again, the higher energy comparing to class A. And the third mode of operation, class C. So class C is a classic way of operation. So we are transmitting data and then immediately we are switching to the, the, the receiver on because this is half duplex. Of course, it is for grid-operated devices. We need a lot of energy because of continuous operation of, of the transceiver. Crypto coverage and crypto in general for LoRa. The security level came from AES-128, so quite basic. All the messages, all the data is uh, crypted by AES-128. And you need to be aware that we have two types of packets. The MAC packet, so the, or, the, or the network packet for the management of the network, and the user packet, the data, the, 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 the payload the packet. So we, we, we call it MAC messages and application messages. And we have different key, security key for MAC, messages and different uh, security key for application messages. For network, it is network session key. For application, it is application session key. So we have, this is the coverage of the network session key. 
So because this is this is MAC message, uh, network management message, it uh, stops in the network server. For the application, it stops in the application server. Message integrity check. Uh, so the message integrity check, it is uh, the field of the packet which is related to the security of the communication. So it protects uh, us against the, the tampering of the communication, some false attacks. And it also increases the robustness of the communication be be because it is like very advanced CRC. So <coughs> the message integrity check is uh, just a number which is, which is computed for each packet using AES and network session key. And it is added for the as a last uh, field of the packet. So this is the range of the MIC computation. And this way, the network server and application server can verify the, the transmitter. So additional me mechanism to increase the, the security. It is hidden, so in everyday practice of LoRa engineer, you don't care about MIC. It is a feature of the, of the, of the security. But you need to take care about the activation methods. When the node is a, is a virgin, it is not connected to the, to the network, it needs to connect to the network in a defined way. So we have two activation methods. Over-the-air activation and activation by personalization. Over-the-air activation it is the most common activation. Do you know what we need to connect to the Wi-Fi network? We need the MAC number of our module. We need to know the name of the Wi-Fi network. And we need to know the password. This is the equivalent. And device has assigned device unique ID. Def EUI. This is the MAC number. The name of the Wi-Fi network in this case, it is the application unique ID. The number of the application. This is the name of the network. And this is the application key. So this is the password. So to join to the LoRa network in over the air activation, we need to send to the network, to the application server, our MAC number, which means device unique ID, we need to send to which network, to which application we want to join, so the application unique ID, and we need to send the password, application key. Then Dev EUI allows to, to the network to identify the device in the database. Application EUI uh, identify to which application server we want to connect or we want to talk to. Application key crypt this message sent to the sent, sent to the application server. After receiving the join request from the node, the application server sends to the network server and then to the node the join accept message. And this message consists of IP number, assign IP number of the node and in LoRa it is so-called device address, def ADDR, and two security keys. And we know those security keys. So we got IP number, def, uh, device address, and we got network session key and application session key. Now we can, we can uh, communicate to the network. And the second way of the activation, we can just hard code or we can just flash all those values during production stage. This is a little bit more easy than the over the activation. We don't need the activation stage, we can save the energy, but we need to manage all the security during the production. We need to manage uh, we, uh, how to store the keys, how to distribute the keys in safe way, etc. So the cost 
of the activation by personalization is the mm, little bit more complex production process. So when activated by personalization, the node is ready to communicate to the network immediately after power on, without joining stage. Physical layer, the key message, compatible with 802.15.4, so Zigbee, Bluetooth, etc. We have preamble to synchronize uh, with the receiver and the, and the preamble detection is, 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 is the really important part of the packet because it lets to save the energy thanks to the channel activity feature of the, of the receiver. So if the preamble is, is broken, we can go sleep immediately, immediately and save the, the energy. Then we have header of the physical layer packet and CRC of the header and then payload and the CRC of the payload. And all the packet except the preamble uh, is uh, covered by the, by the forward error correction code. So there is an overheat because of the, of the coding rate. Medium access. The, the key message is that the LoRa protocol is encapsulated. So this is, st I would say, standard way of, of dealing with the, with the protocols. We have physical layer payload and within this physical layer payload we have MAC message. MHDR means MAC, medium access layer, medium access uh, layer, uh, header, we have MAC payload and our security value, the message integrity check. And then within MAC payload, we have frame header, we have port number, because for LoRa, MAC, MAC layer, we have ports like, like for our IP communication, and then payload. The key message, encapsulation. In fact, the layers of the protocol stack are isolated. And now we are more and more close to the software engineer's practice because we are starting to discuss how to implement the real application. So the protocol stack layers are isolated and how to interact between those layers. Let's consider the MAC layer and the MAC layer user. MAC layer user means, in fact, application layer, in our case. Again, uh, I will highlight that the LoRa protocol stack is compatible to 802.15.4. And in this standard, there is a, a particular mechanism of the implemented of the interaction between, between the isolated protocol stack layers. When we want to ask MAC layer, we, the user layer, when the user layer wants to ask MAC layer for something, the MAC user layer sends request to the lower MAC layer. For example, we can request for transmission of the data. And this request is propagated to the lower layers, down to physical layer. The transmitter, physical transmitter, transmits data. And then, after transmission, as you remember, there is an interrupt. And this interrupt is propagated over the lower layers and through MAC layer and appears to MAC user layer as confirmation, confirmation message. So request, for example, for transmit data and after transmission, MAC user gets confirmation. Request, confirm, request, confirm. So this is, let's say, synchronous event because we uh, user layer, we as a MAC user layer can control when we are sending request to the MAC layer. 
and after request, we know that we need to wait for the confirmation. What about, for example, receive event? This is the asynchronous event. So when the receiver receives the data, physical receiver receives the data, there is an interrupt. This, this interrupt is propagated through the layers and Mac layer sends to the Mac user the indication message. And Mac user, after some processing of the, of the, of the user payload of received data, can respond to the Mac layer, can acknowledge to the Mac layer by response message. So, to conclude, the cooperation, the, the interaction between isolated layers for this IEEE -E -E standard is implemented as a couples of request confirm when we want to ask for something and indication response when some asynchronous event takes place. So request confirm is triggered by Mac user, indication response is triggered by Mac. So this is the theory, this is the practice. How to implement it? For example, we can, uh, you remember the callbacks from yesterday, uh, from HAL library. The callback, it is the application part, only application part of the interrupt service. So we, within HAL library, you don't care about flags, etc. You need to care about the, the application only, and this is the callback. And the, the same idea is implemented for the cooperation between isolated layers. So for example, when the transceiver receives the data, the indication message is sent from the MAC layer. This indication can call the callback, RX data. This is the implementation of the mechanism. So the callback can be called after the indication data received. And uh, for the first mechanism, request confirm. For example, when we request to transmit data, the MAC layer can call the callback TX done. So the implementation of the mechanism, this is the, the practical implementation of the mechanism which is expected by this standard. So we need to implement the request confirm mechanism and indicate response. So for example, when we are requesting for transmit data, so the arrow in this direction, when takes is done, the MAC layer is calling takes done callback. And we can put our, our implementation of the body of this function. This is the example of, the, of, of this uh, interaction. We are waiting for the the, for the transmission and callback is LoRa RX data. So Mac layer is calling callback LoRa RX data. And we need to respond to the Mac layer, but in our case, our response is, is only void because we, we have nothing to inform the, the Mac layer. I took the transmit data and receive data as the most basic ones. But of course, there are a lot of MAC commands. For example, we can ask, we can request for the link check, for the quality of the, of the link. We can ask the MAC layer to activate link uh, ADR request. We can uh, request MAC layer to activate automat automatic data request, etc., etc. And how it is implemented the data rate adaptation. We can send data in two modes in applic direction, without confirmation and with confirmation. When the conf confirmed mode is active, uh, the receiver, the node, expe expects uh, acknowledge to receive a, an acknowledge after the uplink transmission. So uplink transmission and then acknowledge in downlink direction. So if there is no acknowledge, there is some very simple algorithm to tune the data rate. So we are starting uh, first transmission with 
current data rate. If no acknowledge, then we are uh, trying again with the same data rate, let's say high data rate. If no acknowledge, then we need to lower the data rate in first step by one. If no acknowledge, then again we can try data rate minus one. If no acknowledge, data rate minus two, etc., etc., down to data rate minus three. Because the the higher spreading factor or the lower data rate, the higher sensitivity of the receiver and the more robust transmission. We already discussed the duty cycle limitation. So again, to clarify, for there are two mechanisms following this Europe European norm to limit the uh, over the air traffic. The first mechanism is uh, listen before talk. This is a little bit more advanced, but unfortunately for LoRa regional definition for Europe and some other reg regions, there is no listen before uh, talk feature. There is second mechanism defined by this norm, duty cycle limitation. And following this norm, in a period of one hour, the duty cycle shall not exceed the spectrum access for 1%. So we have one hour integration period, it means 3600 seconds, and considering 1% of duty cycle limitation, we can transmit data continuously uh, during 36 seconds. But how it is uh, implemented in, in, in uh, LoRa protocol stack. For Europe, we have three channels within the band, within the allowed frequency band. So it is two megahertz. We have three channels. So when we exceed the duty cycle limitation on channel number one, we can switch immediately to channel number two. So, in fact, we can continuously transmit data during uh, 3 multiplied by 36 seconds. And it is controlled automatically by protocol stack. Again, just to better memorize the hint, please switch off the duty cycle control when the stuff is under development, just to avoid annoying blocking of the transmission. The last part of this presentation, certification. So, in fact, to certify the device, you need to ask for the membership in the LoRa Alliance organization. And on this web page, there is a certification procedure. Of course, you need to provide the documentation of the product, hardware, firmware, software, so typical, typical certification, and pay. We have several authorized testing house and tests are, are, are related to physical and Mac layer because Mac layer includes some, some, some timings. As you remember, the uh, RX slots, for example. So time, time is some finite state machine is implemented. Uh, but the LoRa certification doesn't cover the CE certification. For CE certification, uh, you need to be in line with this norm. And fortunately, the certification house always covers the CE certification. But it means the higher payment. The example of the authorized test houses. So quite obvious ones, I think. <laughs>